Hey, this is WVU Football Going Deep. I am Forrest Poston. And, well, I'm pretty glad about that. <laughs> All right. Uh, talking about being better, which is actually a fairly common subject for Coach Brown. Uh, he has repeatedly said that it doesn't matter how good you are, tomorrow you should be better. <laughs> Some ex-members uh, of the team didn't seem to like that, so now we have guys who buy in, which is one reason we'll be better. Uh, but I am firmly convinced both the offense and defense will be significantly better, but the weird thing is that it's for completely opposite reasons. You know, what I'm going to say makes the offense better, the defense doesn't have. So, seems weird. I'm going to start with the offense. Actually, I'm going to start with the old bit about please share I mean, share in this video, click that share, that helps a lot. Post the link in places. Uh, and if you haven't subscribed, doing that helps. Click the notifications bell and uh, click the thumbs up, make comments. All right. Did I say share? Share, share, share. All right. <laughs> offense. The key to the offense being better is primarily returning production. Now that is one of the metrics that media uses to predict how good a team's going to be. And on offense, West Virginia has a lot of returning production and not just returning production, high quality returning production. And that actually includes the offensive line. We lost Frazier. We lost uh, Nestor, but, you know, we have Yates, Hubbard, and Malone. Uh, Yates and Hubbard, you know, flipped around as starters. Malone started when somebody was injured and played a lot along the way. So all five guys on the line have a lot of snaps. The experience is there. Maybe not the same individual quality with the exception of Milam, who was picked as uh, the 14th best player, you know, um, you know, one of the top five tackles. Left side of the line should be pretty darn good. Um, and We've got Cole Taylor coming back at tight end. If he is as good as last year, he'll be very good. Now, they have specified that he needs to sharpen his routes and improve his blocking. If he does that, wow. Traylon Davis looked more mobile in the spring game. And caught passes that he didn't catch last year, <laughs> which also means Green got the passes to him that he didn't necessarily throw well last year. So that's two good things. We've added Jen Ross at tight end, uh, may split out a lot, which gives us a, a guy who is in between Taylor and Davis. Not necessarily you know, as good, you know, at one thing as the other, but better. So, yeah. Um, the receivers, I did a video on this. They're young. Their total stats from last year aren't that impressive. But you look at how they ended the season, you get upward trajectory. And again, another thing that Coach Brown is fond of talking about. So they came out of last year heading up, 
knowing what they needed to improve on, and they've worked on it. So they actually should start this year better than they finished last year, and they finished last year pretty darn good. Uh, green, and I'll, I'll hold on, I'll wait and talk about green last. Uh, running backs, number one thing is we're not going to start the season facing stacked boxes the way we did for the first five, six games last season. Uh, last year didn't establish the passing game for a while, then had to convince teams that it was going to be around and work. Uh, this year we're starting from that point, so things should be more open for the backs. Donaldson, okay, the torn labrum is fixed. He had ankle problems off and on last year. We never really heard about that much, but let's assume or let's hope that he's coming in with that also taken care of. So a healthy C.J. Donaldson going against a regular line. That should open things up. Jaheim White, it was halfway or so through the season before he really locked in. Uh, with Donaldson's help, he understood what it meant to practice well, and that turned the corner. And, of course, led to him turning the corner every time he got on the field. So he should start the season at least as good as he left off, hopefully better. Now, it's a little uncertain after that. We're not really sure how Anderson is going to come through. Um, and then we get young guys behind him, talented guys, but young. Now, Garrett Green. Garrett Green was among the top quarterbacks in every single statistic except completion percentage. And that was especially, I mean, you know, if you looked at you know, completion percentage over about 20 yards, he was very good. Actually, he wasn't any better. It's just that most people go down in percentage on longer passes, and he was as good as he was at throwing short passes. He should have been better at the short passes. Well, guess what? They worked to identify the very specific reasons why he had those issues on short passes and worked not just with the coaches, but with an outside quarterback coach that he's worked with for years to correct those problems. So we saw in the spring game that he, at least in that game, much better to short passes. On top of that, Tyler Allen is not satisfied with how good he was at what he did well. So trying to improve on things like throwing a receiver open. So Green was one of the top offensive players on the team, has very specific room for growth, and has worked on it, and has shown signs that he has made progress. So even if nothing else got better on the offense, a better Green makes the whole offense better. Uh, so that, you know, yes, it is possible that the offense won't be better. It's not likely. Defense, of course, that's a bigger question because where the offense has all of this returning production, the defense is all about, well, not all about, but a big part is about who left, who came in, and who's coming back. Now, if you start with the offensive line, your top three guys are all 
returners with lots of experience. Uh, you know, I mean, two starters and a couple of guys who played a lot. Now, on that line, we lost Lockhart, and I don't care. I think we'll be better without him. Uh, I don't think, you know, Mulba can go sideline to sideline the way Lockhart did. But Lockhart was off the second half of last season. And my suspicion is that because he really isn't experienced at football, he's one of these guys who picked it up late. I don't think he has enough moves. And teams figured him out. That's my guess. I think Moba will be a better force. He will have better gap integrity, which means we won't see the op- the middle open wide uh, because somebody you know didn't stay in their gap. I think he'll collapse the center frequently. Uh, he, I think, you know, he will dominate, you know, not necessarily in as wide a territory as Lockhart, but more consistently within his defined area. Uh, and of course, you know, we've got uh, Russell behind him, and Russell was really coming on. Uh, now, if you look, you know, to the edges, we lost Bartlett at uh, the Spears or at the uh, Bandit Spur and McLaren at Spear. I liked both of them because I had high hopes for both of them. They seemed like good guys, just like Lockhart. But they didn't come through. We're for, I mean, Bartlett, we were forever waiting for him to live up to what seemed to be his potential, but something didn't click. Don't know what. Something didn't click. Um, and I don't hold it against him. You know, that sometimes that's the way it goes. He stayed, he tried. Now we've got Bradley, which is returning production. And <laughs> talk about upward trajectory from what we saw late last season. He looks to be a force, a force we have not had at that position. And we also brought in Ty French, you know, who is a big time speed rusher, which we have not had at that position. So change the name from bandit to spur. Any way you look at it, we should be better there than we have been in a long, 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 time. Since Irvin? Maybe. Um, now, McLaren, again, you know, replacing him, looks to be Burks moving over there a lot. <laughs> and I think he's going to be better at that position than just a regular safety. So, looks like an immediate upgrade with experience. Returning production, slightly new position, um, so, I mean, it's, it's, it's not like we're starting brand new. It is this combination of experience and youth. And then we, we got Joseph will probably play there. Did not get to try him out so much in spring camp due to injury. Uh, Jennings freshman, but he's going to play and spear is his spot. He'll be summit safety probably, but spear looks to be his future, and he looks to be a pure natural at it. Um, I mean, just this combination of instinct and athletic ability and and desire. It's not quite clear. I mean, you know, with some of the other guys, yeah, I think we had desire mostly, and sometimes we had athletic ability and maybe not the instinct or not the speed, just different things that didn't fall into place. Um, if you look, and I'm going to skip the linebackers, uh, for now, (laughs) because they're the most fun safeties, Wilson and either Burks or Joseph. 
I know a lot of people weren't fond of Wilson because he's short and his coverage wasn't that good. But he, his upward trajectory, very good. And he wasn't asked to cover at Georgia Southern. That's something they've been working on. The question is whether or not they've been successful. We don't really know yet. We won't know until partway through the season. But, I mean, he should be better in at least most ways. If you know, I mean, if he's up to where he was at the end of the season, we're good. If he's improved his coverage, we're very good. Now, Joseph will probably play when Burks is at, uh, you know, spear or moving around. Uh, we don't have, I mean, we, we have good expectations for him, good size. Um, we haven't seen a lot. He was out for the spring game. But depth is much better. And then we do have Jackson and uh, Tagaloa Nelson uh, and Avery Wilcox. And then some freshmen as well. Defensive back, we are faster. We are mostly longer. I think we have more guys who can go man. And we have depth. We're not going to have to play the same two guys 80% of the plays. And these are also guys who can move around and do a lot of different things. You know, Garns can go into Spear, uh, shift Burke someplace, and you change the dynamics. And whether you're going against a run-heavy team, a pass-heavy team, we have the defensive backs who can shift around, who can rotate and adapt to whatever the offense is doing. We have not had that. Um, so I think the, the defense will have a lot more flexibility. They will not have to play zone 75% of the time, 80% of the time. Offenses are not going to be able to game plan as clearly and precisely as they have the last couple of years. Um, the flip of that, of course, is... The only guy we've actually seen for West Virginia is Spells. He had good upward trajectory at the end of last year, got injured in spring. Won't be back until fall camp or a little bit into the season. So can we say the corners will be better? Um, not necessarily. I mean, Ruffin and Bishop did a really good job at corner. But we're coming in with depth, variety, and speed. So we should be better at corner. At the very least, more flexible at corner. And that will change the dynamics because, again, you know, like I say offenses aren't going to be able to know ahead of time what's coming. And what's coming is going to be coming Pretty dang quickly. All right, linebackers, linebackers. Oh, man, I am excited about linebackers. Now, one of the reasons we are going to be better at linebacker is Nicoba won't be there. Terrible to say. Koba was a delight to watch in so many ways. He was enthusiastic. He was fast. He played hard. He did not play smart. His problem when he came to West Virginia was that he did not necessarily pick gaps well and he didn't cover well. His problems when he left West Virginia were he did not pick gaps well and he didn't cover well. This is probably why he is not you know, in any NFL camp right now. Uh, I mean, you know, there were times last year when you could just see how badly he picked his angle, gap, whatever. Now, when Lathan was in, they could get away with it. They were flipping Lathan 
and Koba a lot, so defenses couldn't pinpoint, you know, who was doing what. Uh, that allowed Lathan to just play wild and free, which is what he was good at. And, you know, allowed Koba to play wild and free. Which I'm not sure if that's what But also Lathan was just so dang good at getting to the quarterback that there were times it didn't matter what went wrong. He covered it. You know, quarterback was down before anything could happen. Uh, but now we have... <laughs> Guys who are in many respects new and old. Uh, Trotter coming back from an injury didn't play last year, but man, the expectations were high. And the WVU players practically drool when they talk about him. Uh, yes, you expect your teammates to say good things about you, but the way they talk about Trotter, you got to notice it's different. Uh, Lathan is back and he's full speed and he was dang good the first half of last year. He was a difference maker. Losing him is cost us games. Cutter, he was a freshman. Shouldn't have played much at all last year. What he did play, he should learn from. Uh, again, he was not great at picking his gaps. This year we'll we'll see does Cutter learn. That's that's the key. Uh, and then we've got Carico. I would guess that Trotter and Lathan will start primarily, but we're going to see a lot of Cutter and Carico and some Bizer. Uh, possibly what's going to happen with Favris? Don't know. Um, but to me, the big issue with the defense, I've said this lots and lots of times, here it is again, the linebackers did not get into their lanes. They left things open way too clearly for the quarterback. Safeties could not compensate. It wouldn't have mattered how good the safeties were in coverage. They had too much to do. Um, and they screwed up sometimes, <laughs> although some of that was because of the extra pressure. We have better linebackers. We have Lathan back, and we know, you know, he made a difference last year. So assuming we don't lose three linebackers, I mean, I <laughs> we could actually afford to lose two. I don't want to. It'll hurt, but we could get by. Um, but we're going to be better at linebacker. And that's, I mean, that's the gut. They're going to be better in run support. They're going to, you know, clog the lanes in the middle of the field on passing plays. That complicates things. Plus, they're going to get the heck after the quarterback. <laughs> you know? um, we actually, you know, we weren't nearly as good as we needed to be on sacks last year. And yet we were, you know, pretty highly rated on sacks. Now we have better linebackers, probably more pressure from the line, especially, I mean, Martin, I did not mention, but, you know, he has had health issues that are, you know, cleared up at the moment, if nothing happens. So this should be his best year, not just because he's a senior, but because he is the healthiest he's been in a while. And we have speed rushers, including TJ Jackson that I didn't mention. Are you drooling yet? <laughs> I think the, the quarterbacks we're going to face should be having nightmares already. Um, and, of course, if quarterbacks have nightmares before they play you, that's another reason your defense is going to be better. All right. Uh, I'm running close to 25 minutes already, so I know some of you have already cut out. I apologize for that. Maybe should have made this two videos, but that's the way it goes sometimes. 
I think we will be better. So I don't care if the schedule is tougher. We will be better than the schedule. And I am more interested in WVU than the other guy. You know? <laughs> All right. Thanks for dropping in. I do appreciate it. Again, please share, uh, comment, tell your friends, subscribe, click thumbs up, yeah, and all those kind of good things. And I will be talking to you sometime later. So long.